whether it's the American girls, the Korean girls, or basically any other girls around the globe, the music of the Korean boy band BTS never fails to make them all shout. But sometimes with big fame comes big hate and demotivation too. So hey y'all, it's your girl with top five. And today we'll be looking at the top five celebrities who insulted BTS for no reason. Put your detective's hats on, folks, cause we're still trying to figure some of this out. Number five, Melanie Fontana. Melanie Fontana is an American songwriter who was put into quite a situation by the army for stealing the credit of some of the songs she supposedly wrote for BTS. Fans claim that the lyricist who co-wrote hit, record-breaking BTS tracks like Boy Would Love and Tai Hung Solo's Sweet Night is actually stealing credit. Following an Instagram post by Universal Music captured at Melanie Joy Fontana, whose recent work on Sweet Night by V from BTS has just locked the number one spot on iTunes in the most countries in history. Universal Music's post was soon removed due to the backlash. After that, Armies pulled up older posts by Melody, including one captioned, Writing Boy With Love with BTS in Michelle Lindgren was the best thing to happen to me. The accusations of stealing credit came pouring on in, and Melanie has finally reacted to the fan outrage. BTS fans, or ARMY as they have called themselves, did not go easy on the songwriter, which certainly took its toll on her, saying, Ever since Universal Music posted about my participation as a lyricist on Sweet Night by BTS's V, I have been getting a lot of hate. Every 20 minutes or so, I have a hundred messages in my inbox. It really hurts to get messages from people. She continued on, To hear people say you're ugly, you're untalented, you didn't do anything, while the reality is that every songwriter on a song participated in some way. Well, Melanie may or may not have a point with this. Perhaps it sounded like she was taking full credit when she didn't mean to. We'll let you guys decide on this one. Number 4. Ellen DeGeneres Lately, it seems like the famous television show host Ellen DeGeneres always manages to run into problems often, knowingly or not. So this story takes place a couple years back in 2017, when BTS was really starting to peak and have fan bases all across the world. So while they were riding their fame train, they gave a visit on Ellen's show, where things went down a bit messy. At first, all the questions were cool. Nothing much. The boys weren't even fluent in English, so they had a translator with them, who used to translate the questions properly to them. So then things started to make up when Ellen asked them if they had any girlfriends, to which RM replied they had hundreds of them, referring to the fangirls of the army, that is. After this, Ellen literally asked the translator to ask them directly if they had ever hooked up with any of their fangirls, to which RM began laughing and shyly looked away. This was kind of funny on the surface, but also a bit insulting to the boys, as it basically put them in the spotlight with a very awkward question and potentially made them look like fools to millions. Following their first appearance on the show, rumors that one of the band members dating fangirls gained momentum. And when BTS came on Ellen's show once again, RM Kim Namjoon told her that she was the one who taught them the meaning of the word hookup. At least they learned a new word from all that embarrassment, right? Still, talk about awkward. Number 3. Jason Derulo Looks like the famous American singer, songwriter, and dancer isn't really all that famous at the top. Look, we mean no offense to his skills or talent, but hear me out. Simplifying the topic a bit, Jason released a song named Savage Love, which was a pretty good song and, we gotta admit, catchy. No problem. It also gained a decent amount of streams all over. No problem. But a problem did start when his song got super popular all of a sudden when he remixed it with BTS and didn't even give them credit for it. 
Yes, the song went wild as the new remix was released. The BTS ARMY ate that song right up, way more than its original version. His BTS collab garnered over 58 million listens on the song within two weeks. Compare that to the original music video that generated 48 million views in over three months. The song also managed to bag the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100 as the BTS army across the globe poured in their love and appreciation for their idols. Celebrating the same, Jason posted a video of Savage Love's success party on Instagram. While he did tag the record label Big Hit Entertainment, fans of the ARMY called him out for not mentioning the K-pop band members. This led to the hashtag Jason Derulo's is over party to start trending on Twitter. One user wrote, Jason Derulo has forgotten about BTS. Wow, the one that got Billboard number one is Savage Love Remix. Don't forget that. You were at number one because of BTS. Congrats, you made it to ARMY cancel list. Remember, sir, BTS ate you up in your own song. Another user wrote, Um, where BTS in the tags? And you ain't even used the BTS version that got you that number one. And you asked us for 10 million likes? Whew, sounds like Jason got the tongue lashing that he deserved. I mean, if you're really gonna try to ride on someone else's coattails to fame, the very least you can do is thank the people that are wearing the coat you're riding. It's really not that hard to just mention credit. Come on, Jason, get it together. Number two, Olivia Rodrigo. Sliding on into the number two spot, the singer of Driver's License got caught up in this mess too with a pretty bad situation that didn't end well. So basically, Olivia's song Good For You got more US streams than Butter did in the first week of release, and many fans worldwide, mostly BTS fans, were shocked by Olivia outperforming BTS. After her success on the Spotify charts, and with her song being so popular, being played so many times, Olivia and her management made a YouTube advertisement for her hit single. Her advertisement was being placed before many YouTube videos, including popping up before BTS's own music videos. The advertisement had a clip of her music video as a miscaption, with the song that topped the charts competing with BTS. Many in the BTS army were kind of offended by this, as they felt this was unnecessary and quite unprofessional of her to do this. Someone commented, Why did she feel the need to make this comparison? You can promote your song without needing to say that your song got more streams than BTS. Be polite and respectful to others. It seems that all the shade that Olivia was throwing has angered a lot of the army across the globe. Well, the army got the last laugh in the end though, because BTS ended up winning and debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. To be honest, we don't know if the ad was actually Olivia's idea or something that her management came up with, but I think this has taught us one valuable lesson. When it comes to music artists, focus on yourself and the work that you make, rather than trying to throw the competition under the bus. It just won't end well for you. Before we get to number one, make sure you've already subscribed to us and hit that bell to get a notification next time we release an upload. Because I know that you're not gonna wanna miss some juicy celebrity content the next time we post. Number one, Shallon Lester. In a video, Shallon Lester criticizes BTS's appearance while holding a BTS ex Fila poster up to her camera. She refers to the members as, quote, the women of BTS. Look at those highlights, she said, pointing out Jimin's hair. Those chunky Tony and Guy male salon highlights and the contact lenses. You are an Asian man. You don't need to look like a girl named Ashley with chunky highlights and blue eyes. 
You're allowed to look like an Asian man with dark hair and dark eyes. All of you are. Dang, Shalon, those are some spicy words you got for the boys. But she didn't stop there. She had much more to say about the boys. This one, oh, Pinky Lee, she said, referring to Jungkook and his hair color. I don't... How do you guys tell these people apart? Whoa, hit the brakes. Am I hearing things? She did not just say that. Unfortunately, the cameras don't lie. She really said all this to the camera. She seriously looked into the camera and said these rather racist things. But wait, she just keeps going and digging her grave a little bit deeper as she goes. She continued with her harsh criticism. Why do you all have the same weird orange? These racist comments were met with fury from the BTS army as she went too far and the army made it a priority to shut her down once and for all. Well, my friends, that is pretty much it for today. I hope you all learned a valuable lesson today. If you go openly insulting others, it will come back to haunt you. And you don't want that sort of negativity in your life, do you? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, be kind, stay humble, and just don't go around saying bad things about others. It won't end well. Bye!